this video I'm going to show my method of making copies of the two gears you see here. They are from an Ives uh, tall case clock and I believe they're from the calendar movement. The first one which is a sawtooth gear with 31 teeth uh, will be the first one I make. Uh, this is the other side of it. There's a hub that has to be made separately and the pivot. The second gear is a uh, 32 teeth gear with a hub that rotates. So that will have to be made separately and, and a pin for uh, indexing the calendar. So during this tape I'm going to show you my method of making these gears from cutting the blanks from uh, old pieces of cherry wood to sanding the thickness, cutting the blanks, cutting the teeth, making the hubs and the pivots, and uh, then installing the hub which is held on uh, with a nail and a little washer here. The next step is to cut the little slabs from which I'll cut the circles have the bandsaw set to about a quarter of an inch. This gear is about 200,000 thick at the hub. The next step is to sand the boards to thickness and I have a surface sander, part rides on the belt. The next step is to lay the boards out so I can uh, get three gears out of this and three blanks out of that. I use a center punch to mark my center after I've laid it out with a square. Then I'll use this. Uh, to scribe a circle. And I will rough cut this circle on a bandsaw. This is a mandrel that I use for holding the gear blanks for both turning the OD, the outside diameter, and for cutting the teeth. Uh, this is held in the dividing head in the milling machine. So after I cut these circles out, I'll drill and ream a, three, a three sixty or five sixteen hole, three twelve, and they will fit this. The final bore diameter will be done in a lathe after I get the teeth cut. At this point, I'm going to spot these holes with a uh, center drill or a spark drill. <laughs> Drill the holes a 32nd under the uh, 5 16 uh, hole that I want as a finished hole. I'm going to use a uh, 0.3125 reamer to ream these holes to the 5 16 which is the diameter of uh, the mandrel that I'm going to use when I turn the OD and cut the teeth of the milling machine. 
this is a metal cutting tool, so it's uh, it's not cutting as cleanly as a tool designed for wood, but it works for this purpose. The next step in this uh, process, I'm going to uh, cut the circles out, rough cut the corners so that it'll uh, minimize the amount of turning I have to do when I put these on the mandrel and turn the diameters down to the outside diameter of the gear. The next step is to stack the six blanks that I'm going to be uh, cutting the teeth on. I have a backup piece of scrap here to uh, prevent the splintering of the last gear as I cut the teeth. This mandrel is, is uh, one inch diameter here, five sixteenths here. This is to fit my collets and my south bend lathe. So we'll stack. the gear blanks and that washer is not quite right but a washer and a nut to hold them so then I'll put these in the lathe and turn the outside diameter to this all of my turning is done on this 1965 South Bend lathe. The diameter of the gear that I'm copying is 2.605 across the largest diameter, it's 2.605. So we have a long way to go on, on cutting this diameter down. In all cases when turning you want to sneak up on the size, you don't want to try to get down to the size with a couple of cuts. So when I get down farther I'll uh, I say sneak up on the size so I get it just right. I use this quarter horse pedestal grinder to grind all my tools. I hand grind them and I try to make the cutter fit the old gear tooth. Uh, this cutter I've ground front clearance, side clearance, rake angle which is from the tip back and the angle is pretty close. I uh, have to put a slight radius on the tip of the tool here uh, to, to uh, duplicate the radius at the bottom of these teeth. You can tell when you've uh, 
hit the corner because you'll see the flat on this edge. Again, you have to have about seven to 10 degrees front clearance, uh, seven degrees or so of side clearance and a rake angle from the tip back. You can see that uh, that's pretty close to being done. I'll finish touching it up. If I need a radius uh, on a different tooth form, I'll use the corners. Use a single point diamond to dress the radius on the corner of the wheel, either right or left hand side. And uh, that's the method I use. This is a dividing head used to divide a uh, circle into the number of teeth that you're going to put on the gear. First thing I do is check that this is parallel to the table and I do that with a, a little dial indicator and a bar That's to ensure that the teeth are cut perp perpendicular to the uh, axis. Of One of the th things to check before you start to cut the teeth in these six blanks is you want to check the concentricity. That is the rotation of this relative to that and those two being on the same center line. I have a dial indicator which is in the spindle. Rotate the part and the, see the concentricity is within 1,000. That's really pretty good for this part. I used the old gear as a template, put it in the dividing head, and then have the cutter in this bar and line the, the cutter up. to the old gear. It's a closer view showing how the cutter is lined up to the old gear. At this point I zero my digital uh, readout and we'll put the <coughs> That's how each cut is made. So I'll do the uh, remaining of the 31 teeth. There's a couple of uh, cautions when you're using this kind of machine. One, I set stops 
to limit the table travel that is here both directions you don't want the uh, cutting tool to run into the uh, the chuck it has to clear the jaws as it's rotating and we want the tool to clear on your return from the cut so I'll go ahead and continue making those teeth I run this machine at 3300 rpm which is the fastest it will go I'm getting ready for the, uh, the last tooth on the second gear there are 32 teeth this is how we index this one full turn plus five holes lock it down The next thing to do with uh, this gear is to bore this out to the correct diameter. I put a, a face plate with a piece of poplar, counterbored it, and faced it to accept the gear and make this a close fit. That ensures the concentricity of the center hole and the outside diameter of the gear. Also, uh, the axis is 90 degrees to the face. I've fashioned four clamps to hold the, the gear during the boring operation. The same setup will be used to uh, put an angle and face off a, a half inch diameter surface for a washer that goes in this gear. I just check, check the torque on these. I don't want to put too much pressure on the gear, just enough to hold it in place during the uh, boring of the hole. The original gear, it has a hub that rotates so I'm going to make about a four thousandths clearance between the hole and the diameter of uh, this little shaft. Also, it's held in with a washer and some kind of a nail. And it's countersunk, as you see it. Someone did it with a hand chisel. I'm going to cut it with a cutting tool. Use this same faceplate to do that operation. For controlling the travel of the carriage on my lathe, I have a uh, clamp and an indicator with a one inch travel. On the other end of the carriage, I have a 
a holder and a stop to control where the carriage stops that prevents uh, going too deep with any tool. This is a homemade clamp. It doesn't have any uh, graduations, but you know from the pitch of the screw, you can calculate how far this thing moves uh, with one turn on the uh, screw. On this gear, it requires a counter bore and a tapered clearance for a washer that gets nailed to the hub of the gear. Well, I use the same tool to do the facing and generate the angle. The compound is set at 30 degrees, so what I'll do is face to a uh, given point and then crank the compound out to generate the angle. Now all I have to do is sand uh, the little burr and uh, that will be complete. The gear that I'm going to duplicate has a 43 thousandths piece of pivot wire uh, to index the calendar dial. I'm using the uh, same faceplate and wooden block on the faceplate to drill that hole. Now to line it up, I put a piece of uh, 045 pivot wire in. line this pin with the pivot wire. I'll run it. Line it up the X and Y axis. You can see where that your uh, pivot wire in the chuck and the pivot wire in the original part are lined up and I'll drill the five gears that I'm making uh, lining up a tooth with this mark. For the pin that indexes the uh, date wheel, I've got a piece of wire to lend, put in a 3 8 drill. Use that to square off the ends. Now I'll put a point on using the same uh, method. To put the, put the uh, gear or the pin into the gear, I use the same faceplate from the lathe. It's bolted to the table. I have a mark where I line it up. I have a pusher with a hole drilled to the depth I want the pin to stick out. Then with a pair of tweezers, The hub for this gear, which you see here, is pretty much a straightforward turning operation.
uh, on the back side of that gear, it's retained with a steel washer, and I'm using a common nail. Have to sand the uh, die burrs off of it to get it to fit pretty good. But that pretty much concludes making of that gear. The second gear that I'm making is a sawtooth gear that indexes the uh, calendar wheel uh, in the Ives Tall Case Woodworks clock. The hub is just a pretty, pretty much a straightforward turning with a pivot. Now, one of the things about this gear is it's 31 teeth. Determining the diameter of that, when you have an odd number of teeth, I always make a a ring gauge, as I call it, to get the exact diameter. That's very helpful when you have an odd number of teeth. Also, to make sure that the new gear matches the old gear, I made a paper template from this gear. Then I wanted to make sure that the paper template fits the new gear. Which it does. That tells me that the diameter is uh, going to be pretty close to the original. The hub on which this gear rotates is I'm going to make it out of three quarter inch dowel. This section is tapered 12 thousandths, uh, so I'm making that hub in this direction on this piece of uh, three quarter inch dowel. I've turned the, t uh, the section that uh, goes to the washer side of the gear. Uh, I have a special tool. This tool is, is a, a 3 8 wide high speed steel. I've ground the angle to give me the taper that's required on this section uh, of the hub. Uh, and I have side clearance so that all I do is plunge cut and I'll demonstrate the plunge cut here. So I'll go down to the proper diameter, which in this case is uh, 357, 357 thousandths, and that completes this. The next step is to center drill and drill the hole for the nail. Now I'm going to uh, drill the hole for the nail and I'm going 680 thousandths deep and I put a piece of masking tape to mark the depth so that I don't go too deep. Again, this cut here was just a demonstration of how this high speed tool works when plunge cutting into wood. To cut the hub from the three quarter inch dial after completion, I have a parting or cutoff tool. We'll get a touch point on that shoulder and then move over 312 thousandths and plunge cut to cut this thing off. Now I have to move the carriage 312 thousandths. To measure that distance, I have this indicator, dial indicator, clamped to the bed. So we'll move the carriage to the left. One, two, 300, 10, 12 thousandths.
Now this uh, original gear, as you can see, there is a gap under the roller, which means this is recessed here, and it's about a 12 thousandths recess from 730 seconds from the, the uh, tooth, tip of the tooth, right through the center. To put the undercut uh, in this gear, I'm going to use the same uh, face plate, and it's held on with four clamps again. Now to get the depth of cut I have this gauge which is clamped to the uh, bed and as you see it's set 13 thousandths. Uh, I'll go into zero on the indicator and that'll be the proper depth for that undercut. Now to make the cut we have a 1 8 radius tool ground as you can see here. I have the cross slide set to the starting point and we'll just cross cut this right to the center. This gear has a 3 30 seconds pivot, so I'll have to make several of those. Now to cut pivot wire, uh, I, I made this little mini chop saw from a Dremel, which I clamped into an arm. It moves up and down, much like a uh, chop saw. Have a movable stop here with a ruler to indicate the size and an adjusting knob, and the clamp that holds the pivot wire being cut. Now that gives a square cut and you can hold the length very accurately. All that's required is uh, burring the, the corners to remove uh, any burr that might be there from the friction cutting operation.